Have you ever experienced this moment? You come home after a long and stressful day, and it's raining cats and dogs outside. Your last workout is already a couple of weeks away, and you know that you should at least go for a little run or a quick gym session. But you decide to stay at home on your sofa because of the cats and dogs or because of your inner couch potato. Back in the days when I studied sports and worked as a fitness trainer, I found myself confronted with exactly this topic on a daily basis. The lack of motivation for regular physical activity. And I encountered it from two perspectives. As a fitness trainer, my job was not only to show people how to work out, but to keep them motivated and pushed towards reaching their training goals. The other way around, when I finished my very physically active studies and found myself with a full-time desk job, I got to experience it myself. Unmotivated workout moments. So even for me, a sports-loving woman, it became harder to keep on track. It was that same moment, though, where I also became aware of how motivated I was when it came to consuming digital media, like games. In 2018, the world population counts 7.7 billion people. 2.6 of them are gamers, while in contrast, only 1.5 are sufficiently physically active. Gaming has indeed become the leisure time activity number one, and the average gamer is no longer the nerdy guy in his teens. It's a 34 years old adult, and nearly half of all gamers are women. So what is it that fascinates so many people from different gender and age about games? And what could the fitness sector actually learn from a trend which is mainly associated with laziness and couch potatoes? Well, when I started researching games nine years ago, I found that at this point of time, almost 10 years of game research reached the potential of games and game elements for motivational purpose in non-gaming contexts, like health, education, and training. Playing games is probably the oldest culture technology of humans. Long time before the Homo sapiens could read or write, he evolved to be the Homo ludens, the playing human. Playing games allow us to engage with what Johann Huizinger called the magic circle and to experience fun and joy in a preset system of rules while being different from daily life. In today's digital age, powerful technologies like AR, VR, and mixed reality took playing games to the next level. The player now gets immersed and feels physically present in the virtual gaming environments. Full body motion controller technologies make these games even more body centered. So parts of the player's body or even the whole moving body directly interact with game technology which mediates the player's input into the virtual gaming world. Consequently, the physical and the virtual play space blend into each other, which results in a very immersive, multisensorial and multimodal experience. So let's face it. The majority of us are not naturally born fitness junkies. But we are all naturally born gamers in that sense that we all have to certain extents a natural play instinct. And we all live in the digital age where our technological achievements allow us to physically engage with virtual gaming environments. So there's a huge potential of these body-centered games in the context of motivating effective and attractive fitness training, right? In fact, it was the gaming sector which first recognized this potential. About 10 years ago, movement-based games for the Nintendo Wii turned our living rooms into playful training settings. A bit later, the sports sector came up with sensor technologies which allowed their users for monitoring their training progress and thanks to points, badges and leaderboards for comparing with others. These technologies brought up the term of gamification in the fitness sector for the very first time. Another couple of years later, we can now find fitness providers who enrich their existing training solutions with innovative gaming technologies. Virtual training simulations and game-based fitness trainings are no longer fiction. They have become reality. 
Fitness games have been applauded for increasing workout motivation and for their potential to enhance motor cognitive and conditional effects. However, we can so far only find fitness-first applications featuring a science-proven holistic training concept, but not necessarily a good game design. Or the other way around, we can find gaming-first applications featuring an audiovisual appealing and attractive motivating game design, but no holistic training concept. So to establish fitness games as sustainably effective, attractive and motivating training tools, it takes more than simply putting together some body movements with some input devices and some gaming elements. My team and I have been working on this topic for several years now, and we resolved and redefined the design process of holistic fitness games. Here you see two of our fitness game solutions from our own R&D work. Plunder Planet for children and the Execube for adults. Both are immersive and adaptive fitness games which can be played as single as well as multiplayer version. So let me guide you through our design process. We are an interdisciplinary team of sports science, game researchers and game designers and we brought together the expert knowledge from both fields. We further work together with our target groups to ensure that the result would meet the user's expectation. Our holistic and symbiotic design approach respects the interplay of all three design levels of a fitness game setting, namely the player's moving and sending body, the mediating game controller technology, and the virtual game scenario representing the player's bodily input in the virtual environment and providing audiovisual feedback. On the bodily level, we experimented a lot with various body movements, and we implemented single bodily interactions as well as social bodily interplay strategies while also following a movement science-based training approach. So the Execube can, for example, be controlled with naturally feeling and flowy functional workout moves. From game research, we know that the perceived naturalness of the player's body movements has an impact on flow and immersion, which are both desirable feelings when it comes to playing a game. From sports science, we further know that a holistic training concept features motor cognitive and coordinative challenging exercises. Regarding the game controller, we also experimented with various physical controller setups, which were part of the input device as well as of the physical playground. From related work, we know that the properties of a game controller, again, have an impact on flow and immersion. So the more natural a full body motion controller integrates into the moving player's body scheme, the better the experience. Haptic and its combination with physical immersion in a real play space further appear to enhance or facilitate proprioceptive cues, which are key for skill acquisition. On the level of the game scenario, we designed audiovisual and narrative appealing game settings, and we implemented target group specific wishes for the look and feel, for the story, and for the rules. From game research, we know that a well considered implementation of different bodily and spatial perspectives, like a first person view or a third person view, as well as mechanics triggering different motivational types like exploring, achieving, competing, or socializing are very important design parameters. Furthermore, we know that a fitness game should always adjust to a player's individual physical and cognitive skills to ensure that everybody experiences his or her optimally balanced workout and gaming condition, the so-called dual flow. Whenever we completed a design cycle, we evaluated the attractiveness and effectiveness of our prototypes to learn from the results. Together with our international research partners, we conducted user studies. And for example, we could show that the effectiveness of an execute session is similar to the effectiveness of a functional workout with a personal trainer. However, the execute felt more motivating and attractive for most of the testers even for fitness lovers. Besides our lab studies, we continuously exhibited our prototypes and observed natural and relatively uninstructed interactions of people with our games. 
And this revealed innovative design ideas and new approaches. So with Blunder Blended, it was actually field research which inspired us to implement interdependent body movements of two co-located players and to experiment with the controller setup as social interaction shaper. Today, I brought the Execube with me to give you a better idea of how the playful future of fitness training could look like. You see here how Simon is currently performing live, just for you, a little Execube session. Before she was guided through a movement tutorial where she learned all the steering movements and got familiar with physically interacting with and in the cube setting. You see how Simone's heart rate increases and based on her in-game performance and fitness skills, the game difficulty and complexity adjust to her individual needs and skills. Simone truly goes with a dual flow. So you see, thanks to new technologies, gaming is no longer an exclusive couch potato activity. Try it out yourself and follow your natural play instinct more often. Combine business with pleasure, experience how motivating a playful workout can be and go with a dual flow. Thank you.